Hi, my name is Grace Kemp from www.scriptureseries.com. I'd like to share with you some brief thoughts on the Dead Sea. Uh, thoughts that came from personal observation. When I was visiting in Israel, I was on the 17th floor of a beautiful hotel uh, south of Ein Gedi, near the southern end of the Dead Sea. I looked out the window and was quite amazed because I thought I was looking at the Al Isan Peninsula. However, the peninsula seemed to go all the way across the Dead Sea, all the way over to Israel's side. Uh, normally, it, uh, from my familiarity with it, it, uh, was, it went halfway out into the Dead Sea from the Jordanian side. In the morning, I asked our guide Tito if that wasn't the Al Isan Peninsula, and he assured me that it was the Al Isan Peninsula. I said, well, how come it's all the way across the Dead Sea? In other words, dividing the Dead Sea into two bodies of water. He said, well, of course, the water is receding at the rate of a yard a year at the Dead Sea. Consequently, the al now goes all the way across. I was simply stunned because I was familiar with Ezekiel 47, which says that during the millennium, the thousand-year reign of Christ, as soon as the temple is built at Shiloh, the river of life will flow out from underneath the altar. It will flow east, and then it will flow south past Jerusalem, and then it will divide, part of it going to the Mediterranean, and part of it going toward the Jordan. When the river of life uh, flows from the Jordan into the Dead Sea, it says it brings healing to the northern part of the Dead Sea. In other words, the Dead Sea, it says, uh, that is, now supports no life whatsoever, will be teeming with fish and fishermen, and the water will be healed, it says in Ezekiel 47. Um, I'd always wondered, because it says clearly that the southern part of the Dead Sea will not be healed, it will remain salty, in the marshy, shallow area. The southern end of the Dead Sea is only 35 feet deep, and the northern end is about 1,300 feet deep. So I thought, well, you've got one body of water, the top uh, northern part is salty, or is, is actually turned into fresh water, where the second part, the lower part, remains uh, salty. I was amazed to see that God has separated them into two separate bodies of water. Now it's easy to understand how the northern section, the deep section, could be healed and, and made fresh water, and the southern section, the marshy, salty area, would remain salty. Another thing that I noticed when I was standing at Qumran looking at the Dead Sea, how, of course it's far from the shore now because of the uh, falling water level in the Dead Sea, uh, it suddenly dawned on me that this could be a possibility. At the midpoint of the tribulation, about five million Jews will run for their lives from the, quote, beast who will be in Jerusalem and seeking to destroy them. This is where it says in Matthew, you know, if you're in the field, don't go back to your house. Run. Flee to the wilderness. And I will uh, give you wings of great eagle uh, to speed you up as you travel. Uh, these Jews will be running toward the wilderness, uh, which is the Dead Sea area. And when we drove down the, east, the road on the eastern side of the Dead Sea, I realized that it could not accommodate five million people. Also, because of the earthquakes that will hit that area in the tribulation, I was looking at the boulders above us on the, on the western side, and I think the road will be totally impassable in the, in the tribulation. And then from Qumran, looking at the Dead Sea, I saw mud flats on the eastern side that must have stretched out 3,000 feet. Um, they weren't even all the way, they, they weren't 3,000 feet all the way down, but as the Dead Sea falls, there's mud flats on the eastern side, and I think God is probably preparing a highway in the sea for the fleeing Jews uh, as they run toward probably Petra, a, a place that is prepared for them in, in Jordan. So I think it'd be easy to visualize him running through the Dead Sea to the al Isan Peninsula, crossing over to the Jordan side, and uh, traveling as quickly as they could down into the uh, Arabah Valley and to Petra. And so it tells me that the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Time to get ready. Be prepared. Make sure you have a relationship with Christ so that you can be ready to go when he calls us home. God bless you.